Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Science Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 25th March 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see some important introduction regarding those topics. So first topic it is regarding Ladakh. Okay, so it is uh, our eastern boundary, right? So this article which is mainly talking about Ladakh. So actually this Ladakh is very important because we are sharing boundary with China. And across this LAC region, we know that there is confrontation, there is military standoff that is happening since May, April 2020 onwards. So this topic is very much important to know the background of this Ladakh. And next topic is about sealed jurisprudence. So already we discussed this topic and once again there is one editorial which appeared in today's newspaper. We are going to discuss that sealed jurisprudence, sealed cover jurisprudence. So this topic it is important from your polity which mainly comes under your GS paper 2. And next topic it is regarding crisis in Sri Lanka. So already there is one article I think uh, 3 days ago in our text and context regarding the Sri Lanka issue. So now today's uh, newspaper one editorial which came regarding this crisis in Sri Lanka. So we are going to discuss this topic in a very great detail. So this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your GS paper too. And next topic it is regarding government steps in to tackle Russian trade hurdles. So here this article which is mainly talking about what are the steps that is going to take and by India mainly regarding this Russian trade because Russia which is mainly exempted from the SWIFT right. So because of this there is some hurdle regarding payment or payment issue between India and Russia. So that is the thing which is mainly talked here. And this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes under GS paper 2. And next topic it is regarding UNGA votes, okay, United Nations General Assembly. So India again abstain on this, on this United Nations General Assembly votes. So this article it is important from international relations which mainly comes under GS paper 2. And next topic it is regarding TB. So yesterday is World's TB Day. So there is one report which is released regarding this TB in India. So this topic it is important from your health which mainly comes from GS paper too. And even we can conduct this topic in our science and technology where we will be studying about diseases that is communicable and as well as non-communicable diseases chapter. So now let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is do not be embraced by your failures. So learn from your failures and start again. So this quote which is very much apt in this UPSC preparation. Yes, in this UPSC preparation we will be having prelims, mains and interview. So sometimes you may fail in any of these stages. So after failing you should not go back. Try to learn from your mistakes and try to start once again. Right? And now let us try to see the first article it is regarding Ladakh Eastern Boundary. So title says the peculiar case of Ladakh's eastern boundary. So this article is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your GS paper too. So now let us try to see this topic. So if you see central theme it mainly says that Atmanirbar Bharat requires a broad, a bold relook at old misconsumptions with con while continuing dialogue okay so this article which is mainly talking about Atmanirbhar Bharat which mainly requires a bold relook at old misconsumption so we need to know about what are this old misconceptions regarding this Ladakh so if you see actually here now Chinese foreign minister is in India and we are mainly expected to he is mainly expected to meet our external affairs minister and even national security advisor okay at actually if you see here globally geopolitically there are many changes geopolitical situations that are mainly seen and if you are talking about especially this Ladakh's eastern boundary also there is ongoing conflict which is mainly seen so we need to resolve this issue right so if you are talking about treaties usage and customs in this eastern Ladakh region so here what happened so there has never been a defined boundary in this area because of rugged topography so you are having a difficult topography which is mainly present here in this uh, Ladakh region so because of this we do not have a defined boundary in this area so here this area which mainly shaped both polity and as well as relations with the other countries as well 
so if we're talking about lay lay was the cross road of high asia where traders exchanged goods by batter so earlier earlier at this lay so what happened so in this region trade was very much happened so in this trade there was like a barter system barter system is nothing but exchanging of goods okay in return of the goods for example i am giving 10 bags of rice i used to get some clothes or i used to get some uh, shoes i want for example i used to get uh, some wheat i want so there is a replacing of goods which is mainly seen in this barter system and ladakh mainly translates as a land of high passes so we can see different passes are present so what are these passes for example if you see there is a mountainous chain is present so in between this mountainous chain what happened we will be having a way so whenever we are having this pass then it will be very much easy for this area people to connect to this area people okay so passes will be providing a way to connect the people if there is no passes means so between these mountains so we can't go and it will be a very very difficult situation right so actually this Ladakh which mainly contains many passes so it is called as land of high passes so actually this Ladakh which mainly defined the limits of its administrative control over the trade routes <clears throat> Especially during this Ladakh region, in the northern region, we have this Kara Koram Pass. And in the south, we have this Demchok. So this Demchok, it is also one of the conflict area now. And apart from this, we are also having Jojila. Jojila Pass in the west. And we will be having some limited area, which is mainly settled by the people in this Indus Valley civilization. Okay, now it is in the part of India. Some part it is present in India and some part it is present in Pakistan. And towards this debate, we will be having some grazing grounds. So these grazing grounds are very important for the tribal people who mainly rear animals. And even we can see some uninhabited soda plains to the east. And it mainly covers about 100 square miles. Actually, this uninhabited plains, now it is in conflict. So if you're talking about some treaties regarding this Ladakh, so if you're talking about in 19, uh, sorry, 1684, in 1684, we have this treaty of Timong Song. So this treaty, which is mainly between Leh and Lhasa. Okay, so it is regarding trade exchanges. And apart from that, we also have one treaty in 1842. It is called as Treaty of Chusul. So this treaty of Chusul between this Ladakh and Tibet. Ladakh and Tibet, they agreed to maintain status quo in this region. And next one is we have this treaty of Amritsar in this 1846. So this treaty of Amritsar, it is between East India Company. <coughs> East India Company and as well as state of Kashmir. It mainly included Ladakh. Ladakh in its eastern boundary and this eastern boundary is undefined. So this was the one of issue regarding this Treaty of Amritsar. So Treaty of Amritsar of 1846 which mainly between East India Company and National State of Kashmir. So this treaty which also included Ladakh as its eastern boundary but it is undefined. Actually this treaty which is mainly focused on Pashma trade. So Pashma it is one of the wool that we can see in this Kashmir. It is a very very high quality and it is a very fine and the cost is also very very high. So you can also search the cost of this Pashma shawls in, in Google also. It will be ranging more than 15,000 per one shawl. Okay. And after once Britain took over the governance of India. So later on the attention which mainly shifted to northern boundary of this Ladakh. Because Russia which is advancing towards the Central Asian time, Central Asian okay, countries. So because of this now after British who took control over India. So they started focusing on northern boundary of this Ladakh. And later in 1870, so British Joint Commissioner who was posted at Leh and he also continued to maintain some good relations and correspondence with this Dalai Lama. So this Dalai Lama, it is also one important issue, be, issue between India and China. And if you are talking about new domestic consensus, so there has been advance in developing a common understanding. We are mainly moving from establishing some respective claims to recognize the ground reality. So now what happened? So because of all these things which are mainly happening since history, since 1600s. So now we are mainly focusing on common understanding. So we are mainly focusing on development of proper relations. And we need to recognize the ground reality at this area. In 1959, after we got independence, 
So experts from the both the countries, that is India and as well as China, so they not un, not unexpectedly and they want to harden some positions on the both the sides, okay? And they mainly came with the correspondence regarding the travel record as well. And in 1993, we came up with agreement, that is agreement on the maintenance of peace and tranquility along this line of agile control. And it mainly brought in diplomats and dialogue, which mainly moved from history to principles. And later on in 2020, the focus which mainly shifted from the ground situation and after 15 rounds of talks. So recently we saw that since 2020 May, April onwards, there is standoff which is mainly going on across this LAC line of actual control. And we went for 15 level of uh, different levels of round of talks between India and China. But it does not yield a good result. Okay, it does not yield it like a status quo at this region. Right. So, for example, if you're talking about 17, 17 point agreement that is between China and Tibet in June 1951. So, even as Chinese mainly moved to Tibet across this Aksai Chin and this Northeast Frontier Agency, which was handed over the military uh, ministry of this external affairs, but not Ladakh. So, actually in 1951, after we got independence, we went for the 17 point agreement. So, this 17 point agreement, which mainly more, uh, which mainly said that Chinese moved into Tibet across its Aksai Chin and even northeastern frontier agency. So it is nothing but Arunachal Pradesh region. So it mainly handed to this Ministry of uh, External Affairs, but not Ladakh. And next one is we came up with one agreement in 1954 that is India China Agreement. So it appears as a reference to passes marking the boundary in eastern sector. Okay, sorry, in central sector. So actually across this India-China boundary, we are having some issues in western sector, in central sector and even in the eastern sector. Okay, in, sec in central sector, we have Uttarakhand and as well as Himachal Pradesh area. So in these areas, we have some conflict. So India-China agreement, which mainly made in 1954, it mainly appears that the reference to passes uh, marking, uh, marking the boundary in the central sector and it mainly includes some passes in Ladakh as well. So this, my, this mainly which led to the new official maps, we came up in year 1954, okay? And Ministry of External Affairs, which mainly deciding the most, the most favorable line in the Eastern Ladakh. So later on, in 1954, not this 1962 Indo-China war, it is a turning point between the relationship between India and China. So unilateral actions that we are taking, okay, from the both the sides and we are focusing on neutral territory, okay, and we are focusing on establishing of strategic road and as well as defining the boundary along this LAC region. So this might lead to the dispute instead of adopting a watershed principle regarding the border of all the Himalayan states, okay. So this is about this topic and if you are talking about what is the omissions and the commissions, so actually the solution for this issue which mainly lies equally unique, okay, 70 years old continuing dialogue despite each side calling other an aggressor and as well as sporadic military incidents. So if you want to come up with the solution regarding this India-China dispute regarding this LAC region or the border, uh, boundary issues, so we need to come up with continuing of the 70 years old dialogue, so we should not say one country against another country as aggressor and as well as sporadic military incidents etc. So instead of these claims we need to go confidence in the both the countries. We need to enable proper acts and as well as commissions and omissions that we need to come whatever the things that we are coming from the sins past. Okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding sealed justice or we can say like sealed cover jurisprudence. So this topic, it is important from your polity point of view, which mainly comes under your GS paper too. And this topic will be important from your mains, not from prelims. <coughs> so if you're talking about what is a sealed cover jurisprudence, why it is in news. So recently, while hearing a criminal appeal against Bihar government, here CJI, Chief Justice of India, he mainly admonished a council he mainly, sub, he mainly said that you can submit the in evidence in the sealed cover report. So the evidence which is mainly supported in a, sub, uh, submitted in a sealed cover report to the court. Okay. So here what happened? So the evidence which is mainly submitted in a sealed cover report. So this sealed cover jurisprudence has been frequently employed by the court. 
So what happened in the recent days, we can see this sealed cover jurisprudence, which is mainly seen in the in our judiciary. So for example, if you're talking about Rafael fighter jet deal and BCCI reforms, Bhima Koregon case. So these are some important cases. So in these cases, evidence which is mainly submitted in this sealed cover. So what is the sealed cover jurisprudence? It is a practice which mainly used by Supreme Court and even sometimes lower courts are also exhibiting this. So here you can get a statement like, so sealed cover jurisprudence, it is mainly practices only by Supreme Court. Not only Supreme Court, but even other lower courts, they will be also exercising this type of sealed jurisprudence. Okay, in the sealed cover jurisprudence, so here judiciary will be asking for presenting information or presenting the evidence okay in a sealed envelopes such that they can be only assessed by the judges so where so where it is written so actually in the rule 7 of order 8 or oh sorry order 13 of supreme court rules and even section 123 of indian evidence act so in these two areas so this sealed cover jurisprudence it is mainly mentioned so if you see the first one that is rule 7 of the order 13 of supreme court rules so according to this rules it mainly says that chief justice okay chief justice of court which mainly directs certain information that can be submitted in this sealed cover such that only the chief justice and if it is required opposite party can allow can allow to access this information not it cannot be published or publicized so it can it also mentions that information can be kept confidential if its publication is not considered to be the interest of public so if it is not the interest of public then that information can be kept confidential and if you are talking about indians evidence act of 1872 there is one section section 123 so under this act so official unpublished documents which are mainly relating to state affairs they are protected and a public officer cannot be compelled to disclose such documents okay so under this act the official unpublished documents they are mainly relating to the state affairs they are mainly protected and a public of officer cannot be compelled to disclose such information and it's when it's, there is also some other instances where information may be sought in the secrecy or confidence or when its publication impedes and ongoing investigations such as details which are part of police case diary as well so these are the two important things that you have to remember regarding this indians evidence act of 1872 so what are the issues now so first one is so many critics say that it is against the principles of uh, accountability and transparency so it is not according to the favorable things or to the principles of transparency and accountability of indian justice system as it stands against the idea of an open court okay and the decisions can be subjected to public scrutiny and next one is reduce the scope of reasoning so to enlarge the scope for arbitrariness in the court decisions as judges are support to lay down reasoning for their decisions but this cannot be done when they are based on based upon information which mainly submitted confidentially so it will be also reduce the scope of reasoning as well and there is also obstruction to free and fair trail and as well as adjudication as well and it's also arbitrary in nature so whenever information or whenever the evidence which is submitted in the sealed cover so these sealed covers are dependent on the individual judges looking into this point okay so because of this rather than a common practice it also makes them ad hoc and as well as arbitrary as well so we're talking about what is the way forward the process of judicial review is significant since it holds this executive accountable okay so we need to go for transparency and accountability in this judiciary and the executive must con uh, co uh, co uh, gently answer to its actions especially when the fundamental rights such as free speech are curtailed and indian constitution does not give its free hand to executive to pass arbitrary orders which are violating such rights okay so executive need to go for acts answering these actions okay and even if it includes some issues like fundamental rights regarding the free speech they should not be curtailed and next one is court that sits as a mute spectator to any executive action is crude manifestation of democratic decay 
okay so it should not be allowed and we need to go for examining the legality of action through the lens of proportionality so these are some important things that you have to remember and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding crisis in sri lanka so already we discussed this issue now let us try to see this topic once again so if you see context it mainly says that sri lanka's economic crisis is aggravating rapidly there is increasing of the sri lankan crisis so because of this uh, deepening of this uh, crisis of sri lanka it mainly putting citizens through enormous hardships so if we talk about what are the reasons of this crisis so first one is there is in migration so thousands of these sri lankan laborers in the west asian countries they were left stranded and written jobless and this one is shutdown so because of the shutdown of many garment factories tea estates they could not function because of surging of infections so because of this tourism sector which is mainly hit the most and this one is domestic job losses so thousands of youth they lost their jobs in the cities right so because of this they are also having no proper livelihood and income and this one is forex this decline so what happened it meant that all key foreign exchange earning sectors such as exports remittances tourism they are brutally hit so because of this there is decline of this forex reserve that is mainly seen so these were the four important causes for the crisis in the sri lanka so if you are talking about what are the policy failures of this sri lankan government so first one is there is no strategy so what are the policy it is coming up by the sri lankan government so they do not have a proper comprehensive strategy to respond to this crisis and next one is food hoarding so the government which may not declare emergency regulations for the distribution of essential food items so it mainly it put wide import restrictions to save the dollars which in return led to consequent market irregularities so here what happened so because of this uh, increasing or deepening of crisis in sri lanka so sri lanka declared emergency regulations for the special distribution of essential food items so because of this it also came up with wide import restrictions especially to save this forex reserves because on one side there is no proper forex reserves so there is declining of forex reserves that is seen so because of this that led to market irregularities and market and also that led to hoarding so because of this hoarding and irregularities that led to increasing of prices of goods in the market and next one is continuous borrowing so because of this sovereign default fears which mainly rose by the end of 2021 so the country's foreign reserves which mainly increasing to dollar 1.6 billion and deadlines for repaying of this external loans are also looming so what is happening on the ground reality so at the macro economic level all indicators they are worrisome okay so at macro economic level so all indicators are worrisome so the sri lankan rupee okay so the sri lankan rupee which mainly author, which which authorities which are mainly floated this month so has fallen nearly 265 rupees against 1 dollar so 1 dollar is equal to now 265 sri lankan rupee and we can also see there is increasing of this consumer price inflation it is at 16.8 percentage and the forex reserve which mainly stood like 2.31 dollar okay billion and sri lankan they must uh, repay foreign debt totaling nearly dollar 7 billion this year and continue importing essentials from its dwindling dollar account and the sri lanka will incur an import bill of dollar 22 billion this year so because of this that will also leads to trade deficit of 10 billion so it is a present crisis situation of this sri lanka so we're talking about how india is helping so actually you know that india which is mainly having a foreign policy that is neighborhood first policy so in this neighborhood first policy india stands beside the sri lanka so in this according to this uh, neighborhood first policy india have to uh, give some support for the sri lanka so india accepted to provide 1 billion okay 1 billion credit line which mainly signed for the supply of essential commodities and if you're talking about the beginning of january 2022 india has extended assistance of dollar 2.4 billion including dollar 400 million rbi currency swap and even dollar 500 million loan deferment and how india's assistance being viewed in sri lanka so if you're talking about in sri lanka there are some critics who are mainly supporting china and who are not willing uh, to support this india 
right so actually you know that there is increasing of chinese presence in sri lanka so there is some influence of china that we can see in sri lanka so automatically we can see some uh, some negative things or criticism that can we see uh, for this indian help to sri lanka so some people they say that there is sacking uh, sacking key infra projects so the leadership has thanked india for timely assistance but there is growing skepticism that is mainly seen in sri lanka by some sections they mainly said that here india which is mainly investing for some key infrastructure projects in sri lanka and there is some deep incursions especially regarding strategic trichomalai oil tank farm projects and the national thermal power corporation and ceylon electricity board okay so in these projects there is investment from india's adani group and this one is some people says that it is like a diplomatic blackmail so sri lanka media accuses new delhi as resorting to be diplomatic blackmail so the political opposition was accused of this adani group of entering the sri lanka through a black door diplomacy okay through a back door diplomacy so this is just of this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding government steps in to tackle russia trade hurdles so this article it is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your gs paper 2 so if you're talking about context it mainly says that the government has convened a multi ministerial group to look regarding how to overcome the challenges in trade with russia and they also talking about some issues like payment for exporters and as well as importers okay so this is the thing which mainly is, uh, said by our external affairs minister so government has convened a multi lat multi ministerial group to look after how to overcome some challenges so in this context our external affairs minister and some experts they mainly said that so they mainly indicate some possible revival of rupee ruble trade so ruble it is a currency of russia and rupee it is a currency of india so they are talking about rupee ruble trade in the wake of this economic sanctions against russian banks and already you know that this russia which is mainly expelled out from this swift and answering a number of queries during this question hour in radha sabha on india's stand on russia and ukraine which is mainly including some that raised concern over india's abstaining ab abstentions at the united nations and the impact of indian policy on india's trade and ties with the us so they actually one question which is mainly asked in the question hour so you have to know about different hours like zero hour question hour etc that will that you can come across in your polity so as prelims it is very much near i hope you completed the revision of this polity at least twice right so you might be knowing about what is this question hour so i there is no need of explaining about this question hour right so india's position is for peace that the foreign policy decisions are made in india's national interest so this is the thing said that uh, this is the thing which mainly said by our external affairs minister that india's position is for peace and what are the foreign policy decisions that we are going to take that we will be taking based on our india's national interest and because of emerging problems in the dealing with russia so the government which is examining various aspects and even including the payment aspects so these are the some important details which are given and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding united nation general assembly votes so india abstains on united nation general assembly votes so this article it is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your gs paper 2 so now let us try to see context so india abstain on two resolutions so till now united nations general assembly says that so till now india which mainly abstained that is it didn't voted against this resolution which is mainly passed in united nations and recently one resolution which is mainly passed in this united nation general assembly regarding humanitarian crisis in ukraine okay following this russian invasion so in this resolution also india which is mainly abstained from the voting so the first abstention which is mainly on draft resolution which mainly proposed by ukraine and second was a procedural vote okay so in these two also india mainly abstained So the first resolution which was adopted with the support of 140 countries 140 countries they supported and the second was not put to vote because it does not have sufficient support so here the draft version of this ukraine resolution which mainly named russia that the that here it need to go for immediate cessation of hostilities by russian federation against ukraine and in this first resolution about 140 countries they vote in the favor okay and about a 38 countries which mainly abstained 
it includes china south africa and sri lanka and even india and there are five countries which mainly voted against that is obviously russia will be there belarus belarus it is a friendly nation of russia and by using this belarus russia entered into ukraine and this one is north korea so wherever usa is present so it will be opposite for this north korea and this one is syria and eritrea so these are the five countries which are mainly vote against this resolution so now let us try to say next topic it is regarding tb that is tuberculosis so india to be tb free by 2025 okay so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so this will be important from science and technology and even from health point of view so we are talking about context it mainly says that 19 percentage of increase in this tb cases which mainly witnessed in 2021 so in 2021 there is increasing of 19 percentage of cases when we are comparing with the previous years in this tb notifications so the number of incident uh, tb patients notified during this 2021 was about 19 lakhs uh, 33000 and against it was like 16 lakhs 28000 in 2020 so there is about 19 percentage of increase in the cases so this is according to tb report of 2022 so if you're talking about details it mainly says that on this world tuberculosis day on thursday our health minister he reaffirmed the government's commitment to making this india tb free by 2025 and he said that government which is mainly focusing on quality healthcare and as well as advanced treatment and this report which mainly said that decline in this tb notification which mainly observed among around the months which are mainly corresponding to two major covid-19 waves and this one is the national tuberculosis elimination program which mainly reclaimed these numbers and here this report also says that in 18 states which mainly committed for ending of this tb by 2025 and in these states they are coming up with a state specific strategic plans as well okay and next one is government also re uh, released this national tb prevalence survey report which was conducted in, from 2019 to 2021 to know the actual disease burden of this tb and this report said that there has been an increase in mortality rate because of this uh, tb okay and that mainly increased by 11 percentage and the survey report which mainly said there is a prevalence of microbiologically conformed pulmonary tuberculosis okay so there is mainly there is increasing of prevalence of this pulmonary tb as well and among 15 years above above in india there are about 316 per 1 lakh population and the highest pulmonary tb cases that is mainly seen in delhi so it is about 534 per lakh so why delhi because of uh, bad air quality and we can see this delhi we can see there is a lot of air pollution so these are also some important reasons that we can see that is mainly contributing to increasing of this tb cases and lowest uh, tb cases that are mainly seen in state of kerala okay so you have to know in your state so what is the count of this tb cases per 1 lakh population and now let us try to see some facts regarding this tb so tb which is mainly caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis it is mainly belonging to this mycobacteriaceae family and this mycobacteria which not only causes tb but even leprosy mycobacterium leprae which mainly causes is leprosy and in humans tb it is one of the most commonly affecting lungs it is also called as pulmonary tb and it is also uh, affecting other organs it is also called as extra pulmonary tb even our eye can get tb you know and next one is tb is a very ancient disease which is mainly documented in egypt in uh, around as early as uh, 3000 bc as it is tb it is a treatable and as well as curable disease but the length of antibodies that you have to take here is more than 6 months okay so the course will be very very long and you have to use the medicines for the curable curing of this disease and now let's try to see today's questions the first one is regarding subsidiary alliance subsidiary alliance was one of the methods used by britishers to bring as many indian states as possible under their control which of the following are correct statements so first one is it mainly provided for the permanent stationing of british forces within princely states yes of course 
an indian ruler could negotiate with any other indian ruler without consulting no he cannot and next one is british took responsibility to protect indian ruler from external and internal threats yes and next one is it is interested by lord dalhousie but not dalhousie okay it is by wellesley so correct option here is 1 and 3 only and next question is regarding which of the following acts incorporated principle of encouraging learned indians and promoting the knowledge of modern sciences in the country that is charter of tuff uh, 1813 okay and today's questions are the first one it is regarding lord alausi and the second one it is regarding raja ram mohan rai so please try to read the options and uh, try to give me the correct option in the comment box so before concluding i want to make a small announcement we in rathor science we are coming up with the mains answering practice course of one year so this course is absolutely beneficial so there will be weekly targets daily one question will be given and you have to write the answer and you have to send back your answer to our email id so that there will be evaluation and we also providing you one to one mentorship and as well as modal answer so in this way in this one year you are going to cover each and every topic of your gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 and the detailed schedule is given in description box you can download it and you can see it then you will be getting some idea regarding how this course will go on so apart from that we are also ready to come up with this pen drive courses for entire foundation course of 2023 so this will be very very useful because you need to follow the trend of upsc so upsc it is not asking this only facts based questions now so it started asking analysis based questions to answer those questions both in prelims and mains you need to focus on this concept and clarity that we are providing here in this rathor science academy so if you have any doubt regarding this courses please call us on this number 8074765513 okay and if you want to watch the demo videos so please visit our website rathor science academy there you can watch the demo videos without paying a single penny okay so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf yes this is our today's hindu paper and the date here is march 25 2022 and this is delhi edition so first topic regarding this uh, russia i discussed and next topic is regarding supreme court set 60 day cap for covid 19 death claims so actually you know that the people who mainly died because of this covid 19 they can get excretion from the government so the already we discussed about this article in our earlier lecture so it now supreme court said that it mainly limited to 60 days and state uh, the state have the process the applications and they can pay about rupees 50000 per each death within 30 days okay and if you move further you can leave this uh, page here what happened the city page i found this mcd reunification that is regarding municipal commissioners for example north south and as well as east so already i discussed this topic you can revise this topic once again just i want to show what is the development that is happening in that so and so issue and next topic is about mulla periyar dam so let me know in which state this mulla periyar dam which is located and you have to revise what is the issue regarding this mulla periyar dam we discussed this topic number of times and if you see this image you can see breath taking display by sarang at wings india 2022 so you need to focus on this wings india 2022 so actually the highlight of this first day of this wings india 2022 here is four day civil uh, aviation which mainly uh, civil aviation show by this ministry of civil aviation at begampet airport in hyderabad so here what happen aerobatics they mainly going to display display their abilities in this event and next topic it is about seal justice i discussed i discussed about this ladakh and you can read this article so it is a time for india to redefine its relationship with russia okay so how we can change our foreign policy regarding this russia so you have to refer this article and i discussed about this crisis in sri lanka and this data point which is mainly showing about vaccination in india so you can easily go through that and in this text and context you have to go to this crude oil prices and here there is nothing much important today and i discussed about this unga vote india which which is mainly abstaining and here there is one article regarding this fcra registration of ngo it's mainly extended so actually this fcra which is seen in the news from last september onwards okay so already we discussed this topic number of times you can go to that article and apart from that you can see here the farm income fell in four states according to panel so what happened the center which mainly committed to doubling uh, double the farmers income by 2022 
but what happened now this uh, report which mainly says that there is in, there is decreasing of this farm income especially in the four states okay so this is one of cause of concern and uh, let me know your opinions regarding what is the way forward for this issue and regarding this tb i discussed this topic and there is one article that is india china have stakes in seeing a stable russia that is not isolated okay so this article which is talking about india russia and china relations and you have to know so in this in which regional organization india china and russia they are part and next one is solomon islands china bolster its ties so what happened in the solomon islands which mainly signed a deal with china and china will going to send a proposal uh, for the broader security agreement which is mainly covering the military to its cabinet for consideration so here actually the solomon island it is one of the pacific island okay so here we can say like china which is mainly going to increase its influence in the solomon islands as well now so you have to open map and you have to see where is the solomon islands is located and next topic here it is north korea mainly files fires this new new icbm that is intercontinental ballistic missile okay which is the largest test since 2017 So North Korea mainly fired a new intercontinental ballistic missile. Okay, so you have to know about some facts regarding this ICBM, that is intercontinental ballistic missile. So this is your homework. And in this business page, you can see one article that is India will need two thousand two hundred and ten new aircrafts in the next two decades, says Airbus. Okay, so it is about about how many aircrafts that we need here because of there might be growing of international travel and even domestic airlines and even cargo as well okay so because of this we are in need of this new aircrafts in the next two decades so this is about according to one study so these are some important articles that appeared in this today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathore's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much